My husband and I live apart most of the time because he travels a lot for business and would rather spend his free time somewhere warmer on a boat. That lifestyle doesn't really offer the stability I wanted for our son and it wasn't sustainable now that he's going to school anyway, so we live apart. My husband wanted me and our son to fly to him for the summer holidays immediately after our son got home from school the last day of term. I explained to him that I didn't think making our son fly that same day was fair to him and that he was supposed to go to a birthday party that weekend, so we would come after. My husband seemed fine with it. Yet at 5 p.m. on the last day of school my son wasn't home and his nanny wasn't answering my calls. It was honestly one of the worst experiences of my life and I was freaking out and had no idea what to do. I called my husband and he told me to calm down and that he had told the nanny to bring our son to him. I lost it and accused him of kidnapping our son, he told me I was being ridiculous since he was his son just as much as mine and he had the right to see him when he wanted to. Things got really heated between us and I told him he was lucky I didn't call the police and that if he ever did something like that again, I would. Things were tense between us the entire summer, and my husband told me to never threaten him again. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. He went behind your back to bring your kid out of the country without you knowing. You wanted to compromise, and he instead got the nanny to take your kid to a different country without you knowing. It's a terrifying experience of having your child missing. Co-parenting is a thing and you don't go behind someone's back like that on such a colossal level. I say fire the nanny and divorce the husband and get a custody agreement. What he did was abhorrent and next time he pulls through follow through with your threat. Not the idiot. But I have got to say that you might want to have an honest talk about your relationship with your husband. If this relationship was really how good you thought it was then your husband would have respected what you said and waited or would have at least discussed this with you prior to going behind your back and having your five-year-old fly internationally alone. Your husband and nanny both put your son into a lot of potential danger. I don't know the ins and outs of flying a kid internationally and without an adult, but I know that kids can be slippery and he could have just as easily snuck away even with somebody watching him. That's why you're not the idiot in this case, but everyone's the idiot here if you continue this relationship like this. My son is the same age. What you experienced in the time between realizing your son was missing and learning that your husband conspired to have him fly internationally without a parent, with the nanny, was traumatic. I am so sorry you went through that. What the hell is wrong with your husband? The world does not revolve around him. Why could be not, a, fly to you if he was so desperate to see his son, or, b, waited a few extra days. You need to discuss with the nanny how this occurred behind your back. I, 58, was traveling with friends, 80 and 62, from London to New Delhi on a major airline. My friends were seated in upper class, and I had an aisle bulkhead seat in premium economy. The flight was oversold. A flight attendant asked me if I would swap with a lady behind me who had a lap child as she was supposed to be in upper class with her husband, but one of them had been bumped back because the flight was oversold. There were multiple things going through my mind that I did not voice, like why wouldn't one parent and the child remain in upper class, where there is more room with perhaps the parent swapping places throughout the 11-hour flight. Or why not buy three premium economy seats and let the child have their own seat, and yes, I have had three children of my own in a five-year time span and traveled long haul with them when they were young, and we always bought a seat for each person, usually in economy, also, knowing by this stage that any of my concerns would be deemed less important than the mother-child combination, I did not explain to her that my bad knee was one of the reasons I chose the seat I did. I simply replied that I did not wish to swap seats. The flight attendant persisted in trying to guilt trip me, and I said so, let me understand something, your airline has overbooked the flight and you are having to deal with disgruntled passengers, and you want me to help you out for the company's poor management practices. She replied, yes. I said, I'm sorry but no, I wish to remain in this seat. She then told me that I could expect to not receive friendly or attentive service from the flight crew, and that I'd better not complain if the kid behind me kicked the seat. I did not argue as I could tell she was trying to provoke me in order to threaten me with being booted from the flight if I did not give in. I remained in the seat. So, am I the idiot for not wanting to swap seats? Airline flights have become a cattle car experience. 
Even paying for the coach upgrade doesn't mean that the airlines won't do everything possible to make your flight as miserable as possible, and a bag of pretzels and half a can of soda is supposed to make everything all better. So you are going to get surly and inattentive service because you don't change seats. I am not sure you would be able to tell the difference. Now it is probably not the flight attendant's fault because the airlines themselves are driving most of the incivility in order to remain profitable, but the days of fling being a pleasurable experience, even in first or business class are long gone. Not the idiot. Just some context, we have a 9-month-year-old and we just got back from a 5-day trip with lugging multiple bags and our kid through multiple flights. Yes, it was frustrating and tiring. Our daughter steadied fussing on the first flight over, and we were doing everything we could to keep her calm and not bother anybody else. The lady to the left of us kindly offered to lower the window shade so our daughter could sleep, which helped. Now, if she didn't offer or want to lower it, it would be her decision because it was her seat. You paid for that seat, you get that seat. Unless they're willing to upgrade you for no charge, you should not be expected to switch. There were many other solutions and other people they could have asked and the entire family could have relocated to your section and upgraded another person in exchange. Threatening you with poor service was extremely unprofessional and uncalled for and I think I would notify the airline about that. My son David is getting married early next year. For the wedding we invited everyone in the family except my brother's family and I've had my parents and sister calling me constantly demanding I change my mind. My daughter Martha is 20. Her ambition since she was little was to become a firefighter. Unfortunately in 2019 she was diagnosed with epilepsy, and while it isn't impossible to do that job with the condition, it's much more difficult, so her dream is essentially over. Martha was devastated. She got a job as a waitress while she figures out what she'd do instead. She hates the job, but it's an income. Not long after she got the waitress job, we went for lunch with my parents, my brother's family were there, including his daughter Lee. She's two years older than Martha and is a medical student studying at our country's top university. Lee was trying to annoy Martha. She kept calling her waitress and demanding she bring her food. Martha told her to stop, but Lee said she was a doctor and fetching food was the only thing little people like Martha were useful for. Martha was on the verge of tears. She picked up a container and threw curry sauce at Lee, which ruined the dress she was wearing. Lee ran sobbing to her dad, who called Martha a bully, despite Lee having a long history of picking on Martha. My parents and sister sided with them too, because apparently getting a pretty dress ruined is worse than having your dream crushed. We left immediately after, and I've had no contact at all with my brother for the past two years. When we invited everyone to my son's wedding, my parents were angry that we left my brother and his family out. For what it's worth, David fully supports not inviting them. I've said that I will consider inviting them only if Lee apologizes for how she behaved towards Martha. My parents have accused me of dragging out a petty grudge. I'm sorry but what Lee said and did was unforgivable. She tried to torment my daughter during the worst time of her life when she was grieving her dream and felt completely vulnerable. And she's been doing that sort of thing for years. It's David's special day and I want all of us to enjoy it. That means keeping Lee away from Martha. Are we doing the right thing? First things first, I too have epilepsy. I was diagnosed when I was 17 and couldn't go on to the career I wanted to have either. I took a little time off, got a retail job, and went to community college because I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life now. You have a goal and a focus, and suddenly that's gone. It was so weird. It took two years to figure out what I wanted to do, got a degree in that, and have been thriving. Martha will also. Us epileptics are tough and amazing people. Hugs to her. Now on to the topic, not the idiot. That cousin is horrible, and I wouldn't let them anywhere near my precious daughter. Tell the rest of your family who is complaining to stay in their lane and mind their business. Not the idiot. Yes, becoming a doctor is a great feat and very tough, but it doesn't make you better than anyone else. Just because you have a more respectable job and higher income doesn't mean you are superior in any way to people in other fields. You are doing the right thing as Lee obviously doesn't respect your daughter, and your brother is enabling her terrible behavior. Since David is okay with it, there is no reason to invite them. Not the idiot. Lee sounds awful. Like others have said, I doubt she will be a good doctor. 
Judgmental doctors like her just make people mistrustful of health providers and reluctant to seek care, which actively harms patients. It's also just gross of Lee to act as though people are lesser than she is for whatever reason. For what it's worth, both of my parents are doctors and would never behave like this. Lee needs to realize that being a doctor doesn't entitle you to treat others poorly. Heck, if anyone treated my brothers or me the way Lee treated Martha my parents wouldn't forgive them. My boyfriend of one year has a small friend group. It's him, his two guy best friends and their girlfriends and one other girlfriend of them. His female friend has never shown any issue with my existence or presence. She's more close to my boyfriend than the other guys, but she still hangs out with everyone. Like the other girlfriends I regularly hang out with a group and there has never been an issue. As long as all the girlfriends are around, why shouldn't I be right? Well recently for some reason it became an issue for my boyfriend's female friend. According to my boyfriend she complained to him that she feels like she's third wheeling all these couples in the friend group and asked him to stop bringing me around so he'll keep her company. Once my boyfriend told me this my reply was why does she expect you to stop bringing me around? Would she ask the other guys to stop bringing their girlfriends around, is it that a special request just for you? He said she only asked it of him because he's her closest friend in the group. I said it's unreasonable and she needs to get over herself, it's unfair of me to be excluded when everyone else gets to spend time with their partners. He says I'm right, and her demand is unreasonable and weird. But the other guys agreed with that female friend and said it's unfair for her to be left out and my boyfriend should make the sacrifice since he's closer to her. I told my boyfriend and the guys that she needs to get over herself and I'm not okay with that in any way because it will be like my boyfriend filling the void of her not having a partner. Long story short, I was called an idiot somehow and I got accused of not respecting their friendship. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your boyfriend sounds like a good dude. He stood up to his mates when they made a massively double standard request and immediately saw the problematic nature of her request. She sounds like she doesn't like being left out and when you're there your boyfriend pays you the attention you deserve. Yes, it can be horrible being the only single person in a group full of couples, but that doesn't give you the right to be a douch and start excluding people. Not the idiot. I would tell her to get over herself too. She needs to accept and be happy for both yourself and your partner that you're happy. It doesn't sound like a very caring friendship if she's trying to force you and your own partner to stop spending time together. To me it sounds like you and your partner need to have a serious talk about how much these friends actually mean to you guys and if this is going to be a common occurrence from them, it sounds like it could become toxic. It seems she's extremely jealous of your relationship to request something so strange. She wants his company, but not as a friend, but a prospective boyfriend. However, him bringing his girlfriend with him sure throws a wrench in her plans. And the other guys are all in favor of you staying home, because either they don't want to be in your boyfriend's shoes, or because they know about her feelings for your boyfriend and agree that she'd be the better girlfriend for him. Either way, stand your ground. Not the idiot. A few weeks ago, I went on a road trip with my husband's best friend's then fiancé, now wife. During the trip, I guess she, 20, had been complaining about everything I, 24, did, using the bathroom, stopping for gas, buying her food and drinks, etc., to her boyfriend, 27, via text, who was then complaining to my husband, 27. Well, on the way home, we had to stop for gas, and the line to pay was out the door, so visibly busy, as it was the cheapest gas in the county. I told her I was gonna use the restroom then put money on our pump and I'd be back in a minute. I left the keys in case she wanted to turn on the air or listen to the radio or whatever and brought my phone in with me just in case I was needed. This was the final stop on the way home. Anyway, there's a line for the bathroom as well and by the time I'm done and almost to the front of the line to pay for gas, my husband calls me absolutely livid, demanding to know where I am and what I'm doing. I tell him I'm in line to pay for gas, ask what the hell is his problem, etc. He tells me she's been mad complaining the entire time and thought I was just taking forever on purpose or something and was totally off 100% about the situation. 
As soon as they leave our house that night, I tell my husband that neither of them are ever allowed in my house ever again, especially her, because if someone has a problem with me, I'd rather them come to me versus talking crap about me behind my back and exaggerating what's going on, and especially because of how he handled the situation. Fast forward to yesterday, where my husband mentions that he's planning a party for the same friend and his now wife, they had a court marriage last week, for this weekend at our house. I tell him that, in no uncertain terms was this woman, who couldn't take things up with me like an adult, going to be celebrating her wedding at my home, especially since I banned her previously. I told him I marry consider the ban if she apologized early, since the road trip itself was a free favor to her and her husband. I told my husband that the party was cancelled and if he wanted it to happen, it wasn't happening here. He told me I was being an idiot towards him, his friend and her, and that it wasn't fair that now they'd have nowhere to celebrate before she starts cool again, even though they have their own apartment that they could throw their own party in. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You had to use the washroom and there was a line up. Those factors are not in your control. Did she expect you to pee your pants of something? Cars need gas too. Also, she paid for Jack Hall and had the nerve to complain. Your husband is an idiot for having a fit about the washroom. How about hearing both sides of the story before he freaks on you? Also, he is not respecting your ban. Does he value his immature friends over his wife? Not the idiot, but your husband is from what I am reading. The group are talking about you behind your back, and that makes all three an idiot, considering you are paying for it and you need gas and washroom break. Oh my god, I am bloody nauseous with rage on your behalf just reading this. You are not the idiot. But everybody else in this tale bloody well is, to the moon and back. For starters, what business does a 27-year-old have marrying a 20-year-old who clearly hasn't grown past a teenager's emotional state, the texts, seriously? Why won't the little girl complain to your face? Why is she complaining about things you do for her entitled bud in the first place? What a brat. And your husband. He needs to freaking grow up and be a man and stand by his wife's side and not go off on you because she is haggling him. What is wrong with him? Not the idiot. If 20-year-old is upset, why wouldn't she talk to you? I don't know what she texted to her boyfriend or what he told your husband, but your husband overreacted when he called you. What 20-year-old texted is kind of important to judge if your husband's friend is the idiot here. She could have lied about talking to you. But your husband is the worst here. You told him they weren't allowed back in house and he planned a whole party for them at your house. Doesn't matter what happened before that. You said they weren't welcome and he ignored you 